this is Ms. Hurst from Hamilton County Schools. Um, we're going to continue our unit today uh, by reading this text called Russians. Um, I want you to go ahead um, and do a contiguous first read of this text before we start our close read of the text. Um, pause me while you do your contiguous first read. Remember to use your notice, annotate, connect, and respond first read protocol. All right, so we are going to look at how an author develops a tone using specific allusions today, though we will take time uh, to do just an overall close read, but our final task will be about how an author develops a tone using specific allusions. So we're gonna just go stanza by stanza. If you weren't aware um, in poetry, a stanza is basically like a paragraph. So this text has one, two, three, four stanzas. So I'm gonna just go stanza by stanza and ask some questions. So in this first stanza, oh, sorry, before I actually start, I want you to take some time to actually write down the answers to these questions uh, that will help you as we get to the final task, okay? So in this first stanza, what words show the author's feelings about this situation? Following up on that, how would you describe the author's feelings? We're looking at just the first stanza, which is lines five through eight. What is causing the author's feelings? And in this stanza, why does the author include the allusion to Mr. Khrushchev? Uh, in case you didn't know, Mr. Khrushchev is the leader of the Soviets during the Cold War. All right, in stanza two, this one, what words in this stanza show the author's tone towards the Russians? How is the tone in this stanza different than the tone of the previous stanza? And what is the effect of the phrase Oppenheimer's deadly toy? In case you don't know, Oppenheimer is the physicist who helped develop the atomic bomb. All right, in stanza three, this is, there's no historical precedent. What words show the author's tone in this stanza? What is the tone of this stanza? How does the author address President Reagan? And what is the effect of introducing this allusion to the President of the United States? And finally, we're gonna look at this fourth stanza. What in this stanza is repeated from another stanza? What is unique in this stanza? And then what is the effect of the repetition? Okay, so now that you've done your close read, our end task is how does the author's use of allusions contribute to the overall tone of the text? Once you have completed that end task, you are good to go. Have a wonderful rest of your day.